Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra three months free. Hey everyone and welcome to another GT Online Bottom Dollar Bounties in-depth guide here on the channel. Now I did make a video talking about this bounty van already and some of the hidden things about it, but I never made one detailing its actual stats and if it could be of any use in PvP or just in general in free mode. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's start off with the thing that most people are probably wondering about, the armor. The armor on the van isn't terrible, but it's not exactly great either. It'll blow up in 3 RPGs, 9 homing rockets, 8 explosive rounds, or 7 railgun shots. If you have the armor plating upgrade, that is. If you don't have the upgrade, it's like a normal car that just blows up from one rocket. So it gets all of its armor from that armor plating upgrade, which costs around $125,000. These values are kind of all over the place, and they're basically halved when there's no one in the vehicle like a lot of the other vehicles are, the Amiantic vehicles work like that. But it's very weird we'd see a vehicle take more homing rockets than railgun shots or explosive rounds, considering those are just weaker explosives as a whole. And I'd be very interested to see how this would play out if the vehicle had a percentage armor upgrade on top of the armor plating. At that point, I think this bounty van would be very good for free mode use, but as of right now, it's just decent. It's not super good, you'll still die by spam rockets, but it's not terrible either. The armor plating upgrade also makes it a tad bit harder to get shot out of by bullet weapons. The window plating on the windshield has a hitbox, which ultimately makes it harder to shoot the front driver and passenger out, but the windows themselves don't offer any protection to you, and the plating on the side windows also does nothing. It doesn't have a hitbox, so it's just like you're shooting through a normal window. The bounty van can sit six players, two in the front, two in the back, and two on the sides. And I'm not sure if this is actually true or not, or just the experience that I've had with it, but it feels like it's harder to knock off the passengers hanging on the side of the vehicle than it is for other vehicles that have this same functionality. And in PvP, those side passengers have access to the Combat MG as a drive-by weapon that can lock onto people, which is very strong. The final good thing about the bounty van though, and probably the thing that's the best feature about it, is that it has absolutely no cooldown, and it spawns in instantly, like you're requesting a motorcycle from the MC menu. So the instant it gets blown up, you can just spawn it right back in in the interaction menu a second later and just go on your way. And this also makes it a good vehicle to use to get to your personal aircraft because you can't use your own personal vehicles to get there because you can't have two out at the same time. So this is a nice, slightly armored vehicle to use to travel there. But that's about it for the positives of the bounty van. Now let's get into some of the negatives. First of all, the performance isn't good. And it's a van, so you'd expect it to not be the fastest vehicle in the game, but it also doesn't have any performance upgrades to even help out a little bit, so you're essentially stuck with what is a stock van's performance. Now, it's not as slow as the regular police transporter, for example, but it's still just a massive con of this vehicle. It's by far one of the worst parts about it. Even something as massive as the Brickade 6x6 just blows it out of the water in terms of performance and top speed. It just needs to be faster. The bounty van also has god-awful weight. It gets pushed around and stopped so easily, way too easily in fact. For a van with armor plating and a push bar, you would think it would be sort of heavy and have some pushing power to it, but it can't push anything out of the way. If you hit a car with this, you're either going to spin out, or the back end of the van will just kick straight up into the air and you'll be balancing on the front. And it doesn't matter how fast you're going, that'll happen to you. The side steps also clip on everything, they have an annoying hitbox to them. That's another con with it. If the van just had more mass to give it some more crashing power, it would be perfect, or even a suspension upgrade to make it sit lower on the ground, that would probably help out a bit as well. And the funniest part about the Bale Bounty van is that there is seemingly no way to lock it. Every other service vehicle, you can choose to have it set to everyone or passengers or no one if you don't want anyone getting inside of it. But to my knowledge, there is no setting that exists for the bounty van, which means any player can just go up and steal the van from you. Which seems like an oversight, like they just forgot to include a setting for it. You'd think it would just be easily put in the same menu that you spawned in from in free mode, but it's not there. Anyways, that is going to wrap up this in-depth guide of the Bale Bounty Van. Overall, I didn't think the armor was going to be as good as it was, especially the amount of homing rockets it took. I was actually surprised on that. If it did have upgrades, though, it would just be a very good vehicle. It would be even better to use within free mode. The upgrades would likely help out its armor even more and would fix it being painfully slow, which are the two bigger issues with it. Perhaps I will do a rebalance video on this vehicle in the future to increase its mass at the same time also to see how that affects its crashing power. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments though if you had a chance to use the bounty van in PvP. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GT Online content. I also want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support as well as to my friend Endercrafter for helping me record and test for this video. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.
Let's go, let's go. We got a full house. Watch out, Bloodhound's gonna be... He's in the Terrador. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! 